show. Hey. Nobody hey. saw that lighting problem. Hey. Your brothers. We're happy Wait. and we're singing. We're brothers? <laughs> and we're colored. <laughs> do, 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 do. Give me a high five. All right, guys. That was great. Boom, Dynamite. Boom, boom. <laughs> Do you want to talk about a topic or just vibe out? Um, I think we should get the random, wonderful um, thing. Namdi will again choose. No, I think that we're going to... Uh, Namdi did not choose. This is a different video. Namdi did not choose. Are you ready to choose? Here we go. I guess. All right, oh, folks. I dropped one. All right. Uh, what we got? My name is Lexi, yes. and thank you so much for joining me for another video. I have a guest here today, my friend, Namdi, singer, songwriter, poet. Rapper, Cookie Monster, producer, cookie monster. engineer, monster. all of that. I am, I am. We actually have cookies here. Yes, I, uh, they're made wonderfully, homemade. Just I'm not love. Gonna, with love. I did bake them. In my oven. Package in, the store. in my oven. She got me thinking she put flour in there <laughs> with the eggs and shit. I'm thinking like, oh snap, she over here from scratch. They were from placed scratch. on the sheet with love. Nestle. Or Pillsbury? Kroger. Wow. Does that change the taste? Mm. She, was, mm. she went to Kroger. But Is, anyway. Yes. <laughs> um, if you have not seen our previous video on the difference between working with an inexperienced and an experienced engineer, make sure you go check that out. I will put the link in a little bubble on the screen, either here or over there. One of those corners. But Namdi is back to help me with another video. And this time, I guess I'm choosing the topic. <sighs> and. That was, uh, that was dramatic. It's okay. And these nails. We're in the entertainment industry. These nails. I have acrylics right now. You see that? Boom. And it's too much for me. Nah, I can handle it. I feel as if that's a good one. <laughs> to this day. Getting ready for a show. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Getting ready for a show. Getting ready for a show. So I am going to let you kick it off because I, you have <clears throat> an extensive record of being a wonderful live performer. Really? Yes. I mean, don't you? Or are you talking about like uh, as an artist? Uh, do, you, nah, do you not nah, want to mention you the poets, got that? Nah, this is this is your poet side. I, I th that's th that's that's true. Uh -huh. But you the most definitely, I have seen your videos, and you have definitely, in terms of getting prepared for a show, you you definitely like you've seen my videos of me performing or me getting ready for a no, show. No, I've seen your videos of me performing. What? You put them Thank on. You. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> 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 oh my yeah. gosh, I'm dead. But yeah, right. so I will let you I'll let you kick it off because you have a I feel this is more intimate for you. Um, it can be. And I I guess when I wrote this topic, it was more so like to share little rituals that we may do, something that you, whoever you are watching, might want to add to your ritual and stuff to look out for when you're getting ready for your show. Mm -hmm. So Namdi before we got on camera was saying, Well, what kind of show? We're going to keep it pretty broad, like a showcase or a talent show, something local that you might find in your city. Um, for me, when I'm getting ready for a show, first off, it starts like I don't like taking shows last minute. Even though I do practice singing my songs and I always imagine how I would, you know, perform it on stage, taking a show last minute kind of, I've forgotten lyrics before. And I don't like to take shows last minute because I don't have the time to prepare, if that makes sense. Like, I know I'm good, but I also want to make sure that I'm putting on a good show. So typically, if I'm going to do a show, I like to have at least a week's notice so I can have a few days, at least a few hours to prepare. So first off, before getting ready for a show, is thinking about practicing for it and how I want to present it to the public and what I'm going to say in between my songs, how I'm going to introduce myself. like Because how you think about your performance before you even step on stage is a huge part of performing. And a lot of times, the reason why I don't like taking shows last minute is because I'll psych myself out thinking, 
oh dang, I didn't I didn't practice this enough, so I don't know how this is gonna turn out. When you prepare for a show, you have a better likelihood of knowing, all right, I'm about to kill this because I practice. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? So, some things I've done just before the show, like actually I'm at the venue and my name is about to get called. I'll do weird things like I like to do squats because for some reason. I get real jittery and like shaky and okay. cold for no reason okay. before I get on stage. So to warm up, I'll find a back room or just be all the way in the back of the venue or in the bathroom or something and do some squats really quickly. You know, when they say Lexi on deck, yeah, it's like, all right, Whew, those, those nerves hit you all of a sudden. <laughs> excited. So I like to do squats before I get on stage. That's real. And I'll sing like part of my song for a vocal warm up. I don't actually do a formal vocal warm up the way that maybe I should because I just find it's easier to just you know you're about to sing it anyway so go ahead and get those little jitters out yeah okay. hours before I made sure I'm drinking I've been drinking water all day or the absolutely. night before absolutely so my vocal cords will be hydrated absolutely because if you smoke if you've had candy you've had alcohol that's gonna those sugars it's gonna dehydrate your vocal cords it's gonna dehydrate you and you're not going to be able to breathe as well as you would Absolutely. if your body and all your ligaments were properly hydrated. Absolutely. 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 What else do I do? You can go ahead. I can't think you of sure? No, yeah. I, she, you sure? You know what it I is? I got some stuff. But. She has a, so many things, she doesn't know how to actually <laughs> adequately put them back to back. In a way that makes sense. Right. Without my mind seeming so scattered. She is. She performs. She does that. Oh, um, but as for me personally... Um, I will talk more or less, not necessarily ritual, but my personal approach to performing. So I look at performing, um, like conveying your message to people in person, right? So like when you record a track, you're like, oh, like I want them to feel this and I want them to feel that. But when you play the song, it, it is what it is. It's either they it's either they feel it or they don't, right? But like when you're performing a song, there's so many other factors that you can actually make them feel that feeling, even if sonically um, everybody won't feel that if they were just to hear it, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense, right? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So The like, way that you present it will determine how people will rock exactly. with it versus if they just hear it on their own accord. Absolutely. Some people may bop with it, some people may not. Absolutely. Your performance can be the difference in them liking it and vibing with it or not. Absolutely. And um, that, that, so that's how I approach performing. Um, I approach it in terms of my mindset, in terms of how I want my show to go. I always go in there with the mindset of what message am I trying to convey and how, what actions can I do or what, how can I do it that will get that message clear and concise. So like if I have a song that I'm performing or a poem or something that is more serious, no, I'm not serious, let's say funny or high, upbeat, my performance is going to reflect that. Um, so my stage presence is going to reflect that. That's another thing I would say about performing. Performing is very, very stage presence oriented. Like your stage presence is almost, oh shit, what am I saying? Is about the same as if your vocals are. Your stage, your stage performance. Oh, I'm so sorry. I remember. And she, you know, it's big things popping right now. Big things popping right now. We're going to, we're going to pause this. Oh shit. How did I stop it? So, so, I think the last thing you were talking about that I caught before the phone call came in is depending on, sometimes just listening to the song by itself, people would not mess with it. Yes. But the way you perform it will Absolutely. get people to mess with yes. it. But what did you say after that? Yes, I did. So, I, so I, I, I said that, well, I don't know exactly what I said after that, but I do know where I was trying to take it. Mm. And so, what I'm trying to say is that um, artists, y'all should look as, look at, performance as part of your marketing as part of the experience that you're providing for people like you know i feel as if that because we're in a very social media heavy um environment right now culture that people feel as if that actual physical live performance is not needed and actually that is still the most effective way to get people to like you and um i feel as if now that we have so many people that are so social media heavy people that do put in that work and do that live performance you stand out. you're gonna stand out because when the time comes for your for people to actually come to your performance, not only will you have the experience, but you also have the backlog of people that will be able. That's, I mean, listen. Word of mouth is always going to be the best promotion. It doesn't matter what happens, you know. No matter what technology that we we come up with, 
someone is always going to take the word of their peers above people they don't know. You know, um, and whether that's good or bad or indifferent, that's an, that's a conversation for another time. But from a performance aspect as an artist, that's that's key. Like there's nothing better than you performing and someone telling their friend when they get home in their car, like, yo, I met this person tonight and they are amazing. Met them face to face. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 that interaction. Like, like their performance was amazing. And like, you'll be surprised if and when you get to that level in your career where people will start coming up to you and they'll tell you, like, yo, I remember seeing you before you even. And dude, I knew from right then and there you were the one. And I went home and told my friends. I told my mom. But just, like, that stuff, it, it, it's it's never going to not matter. It's never going to not matter. So I, I like to approach my performances like that. I want every performance I have to be a moment, you know, um... So for me, uh, I definitely practice quite a bit before I hit the stage. Like I, I practice. How like many I, hours would you say? How many hours, or man? Minutes? Or does it depend I, how long your set's gonna be? It it does, but here's okay. So this is gonna uh, this, this is not gonna sound weird. <laughs> I practice performing even when I'm not performing. Mm. That's so, not weird at all. Yeah, so <laughs> I practice. <laughs> no performing, sarcasm, you know, bro, bro. That's Like I practice performing even when I'm you not performing. Like so, let's say like if I am in a mode where. I know that performances are coming up. I'll like, I'll perform anywhere. Like, and what I mean by that is like, I'll be, I could be in my car driving. I could be like in the mirror brushing my teeth. I can be, in the it, shower. It, yeah. If I'm in that performance mode, where I know that I got performances coming up. I am performing everywhere. And then when I have the opportunity to full on do my routine, that low key adds up because that muscle memory up here, man, it's it's a thing. Um, so that's one thing. So my preparation is definitely like you can't like if performing to you is a hassle, you shouldn't be you shouldn't do this. Go find something else to do. Mm-hmm. Like that's go. The, that's the bread and butter of your job period. as an artist. Period. Especially like Lamdi was saying, we're in a digital age in a social media driven culture where people think that follows are more important than actual physical bodies being in the, in a the building or people actually buying. Followers mean nothing if you cannot direct these people to support, to Thank come out you. to a live show, or even to get your merch online. Facts. Followers mean nothing if you cannot Facts. sway a crowd, if you Facts. can't connect to people when Facts. they come, spend their hard-earned money to Facts. come see you put on a show, and it's whack. Facts. You're letting people down. And you don't really want it like you say you do because mm-hmm. you would not want to allow anyone to feel like they were not entertained when they Absolutely. came to see you. Absolutely. It's a, it's a way for you to show your personality. Yeah. Like people, they love your music, but they love your personality too. That was just like everybody, like I was, there are 7 billion people on this planet and yeah. all 7 billion of them are talented. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> if you think that because you recorded something in your room or in a studio, no matter how high priced the studio is, that you're just going to drop it and people are going to love it. You got nothing coming. All right, you got to have that. There's a reason why they call it an it factor. Your performance is part of that it factor. It's part of that it. It's part of that moment where people... Something about you. They, some, I, can't, I can't put my finger on it, but it's something about the way she sings. There's something about the way the guy walks on stage. I don't, I don't know what it is. That's another opportunity for you to showcase who you are. So I would say that. So if, if you feel this way, if, everything, if anything that we are both saying sounds like a hassle, go do something else, man. Like, don't even waste your time. Like, forget, uh, you're not going to waste my time. You're not going to waste my time. Don't waste your time. Because you're going to be 30-something and upset. <laughs> like, for real. Like, go do something. Like, maybe you need to be a song. Maybe you need to be a behind-the-scenes guy. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, you know, like, a ba- I don't know. Like, but that aspect of the industry is not for you. Um, that reminds me of a video I saw on Instagram of the rapper Russ. He was basically talking about, like, people Smart have guy, this um, scarcity mentality. They're so afraid that if, you know, if they help someone get to a certain level, mm-hmm. that that somehow means their success is going to be blocked. Absolutely not. And then I forget what he ended it with, because that's a whole nother conversation, oh. whole scarcity mindset. But he was basically like, some people are just really good. If you have the talent, it's always going to get you to the places that you need to be, right. that you're meant to be. Agreed. If you're not getting to those places, it's because you have a scarcity mindset or maybe you're just not that good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and some people are not being honest with their friends if you're not that good. But anyway. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Not being good is okay. It's okay to yeah. not be good at something because at least now you know what your strengths are. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with not being good at something. I feel as, I, like, I think this goes back to the social media age and this new era of music where they you feel as if, oh, my gosh, everybody's perfect. Like, no, bro, listen, no. it's okay to not 
be good. It's part of the process. So that's just me in terms of my 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 thoughts, like mentality. Yeah, my 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 mentality when it comes to performance from a technical aspect. Want to hold the mic correctly? Oh that gosh. that that'll that'll mess up. And no, you could you could be an amazing performer, but if you hold that mic wrong, if you're covering, oh man. Go ahead. Keep talking. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> Yo, like, I, so basically, I'm going to let her come back and explain the mic stuff. But, like, if you're, you got to make sure your mic is right, right? Make sure your mic is right. Because <laughs> it's really, really important. Because you may think people can hear you, but nobody can hear you. Oh, my gosh. And there's nothing that the audio engineer is going to oh be able to do gosh. to save you if you can't oh hold the mic. God. You want to show what, them? What, what? <laughs> Go ahead and show them. All right. So here is the mic, right? If you hold it like this, Nobody can how is you. the sound coming through? The sound comes through here. Yo, and you're man. holding it like this because you think it looks cool on stage. You've seen your favorite rapper do it. That's wrong. The sound comes in through here. Hold your mic like this. Absolutely. With the head exposed. Absolutely. Come on, camera focus. So that... You're getting the most amount of sound that you can, the best pickup. Absolutely. And so you'll actually sound like quality. And plus, you know what you're doing when you're holding the mic like this versus some newbie. I don't right. know. Holding like, look how much sound gets in from here compared to when you do this. It's a huge sound difference. Like, yeah. What about the distance between you and the mic when you're on stage? Um, I would say you don't need to be up on the mic mm -hmm. like this. Absolutely. Like eating the mic. There's this thing called proximity effect, which is a little technical mm. when you're too close to the mic you're creating a lot of bass buildup at the microphone so you're sounding more muddy and not as clear as you should be the mic can be from let's say like four inches away from you and then depending on how loudly or intensely you're singing sometimes you can do like this whole thing if you see singers doing that that's because they're trying to make sure that the sound quality of their voice coming into the microphone is not going to be peaking it's not going to be too muddy if it's too close it's not going to be too faint if it's too far. You're not going to basically pierce people's ears. So mm -hmm. that's all the kind of things you have to think of when you are practicing. How are you going to be holding your microphone for people Just to best hear you? Practice before you get on stage. Uh, I had to get the microphone yes. because that's such a pet peeve of mine. People not holding it properly. There you go. And so something that goes hand in hand with that that I think uh, Lexi will agree with me also on is that... Your best friend in a live performance is the engineer in the building, okay? Mm. Make f good friends with him or the DJ, whoever is the person that's controlling the sound. You want to make friends with that person because it's just a pro tip. Like, you don't have to. They'll just give you the basic, regular stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to set yourself apart as a performer, like, walk up there and talk to the engineer. Talk to the DJ. Even shout the DJ out. Before you get on stage, like while the mic is in your hand, like like these th these things matter because they control your sound. <laughs> and, and not only that, but not only that, but every artist has a band. They're part of your band. The DJ is part of your band. He Even sets if the you tone. just met them that night, they're the, part of your band. They are a part of your experience, your presentation. And the people don't know that they don't know him. So my recommendation to anybody at any live performance, you want to get the live engineer's name, you want to get the DJ's name, the host's name, if there is one. Mm -hmm. All of these people are all part of your performance. Just because you have a 10, 15 minute set, you're a part of an overall larger performance and you have to stay in that pocket. You have to stay, you have to keep that in mind, you know? Like, those things add up and like we said, everything is a building process. Like, like you people probably know, which is why you're watching this channel. Mm -hmm. If, you're if there are 10 people on stage that's performed but you're the only one that knows the host name the dj's name and the live engineer's name guess who's gonna guess who can potentially network and follow up with them mm. you <laughs> okay even if the audience isn't messing with you that night there's something to be said when you're remembering the names of the people who are orchestrating orchestrating the entire event mm -hmm. because really they have the power to give you more opportunities to Absolutely. be on stage to build your audience. And perfect that craft. Mm -hmm. So those are my two major, um, since we're just going basic stuff, right? We're not getting too technical. Yeah. Those are my two major things that I could, that I would say. Preparation and getting to know the house. Getting, and, and Mike. <laughs> no, so there's three, three. Three. You know, we can get into other like technical stuff like lighting and all that stuff, but that's low key out of your control. Yeah. But, the more right, you get right to now, yes. it's out of your control. 
But the more you get to know those people, it won't be. Wink, wink. Get what we're saying here? Uh-huh. Hopefully it's clicking. <laughs> like, um, I see it. I see it. It's clicking. The light bulb. It's clicking. Ding. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What else What else can you say? Have you had any um, experiences with, um, let's say, about the crowd, crowd control? What, do you, what are your mm. thoughts on crowd control? Uh, crowd control. So, we are entertainers. And I just had this epiphany. Not epiphany. I've always known about it. But... Being an entertainer is like the ultimate form of customer service where we hate to, you know, I don't want to, nobody should be judging me. I don't care what nobody thinks, but really you have to care what the people are thinking if they're engaging with you. If they're not engaging, are you staying in one spot on the stage? Are you up at the microphone, not moving? Do you have any choreography? Are you looking people in the eyes or are you staring off in the back? at some random spot on the wall because you're too afraid to make eye contact. All of those things and the energy that you're putting off, the crowd can sense that and they can tell if you're nervous. They can tell if you don't really care about them. They can tell if you're not confident in what you're performing. So preparation is going to play a huge factor in that. And did you take the time to see where are some parts in my song that I can get the crowd involved? Maybe it's a catchy part of your song where they can repeat something, like know it real easily, mm-hmm. and you can throw it back to them. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe is it an emotional song? How am I going to make sure that people feel me? Like, I have a song called Crazy Time, and I kind of. A kinda, good song called Crazy Time, might I add. Thank you. International, by the way. Okay. <laughs> but uh, when I perform that song, I always know that it's something I want people to feel more so than you know, be kind of turned up to it. I want them to listen to the storyline. So I won't be too animated in my movements and too like crazy with the dynamics of my vocals. I'll stay in one spot for maybe the first verse and then I'll walk over to the front end of the stage. Mm -hmm. I'll bend over, I'll look somebody in the eye and I'll point at them to make that personal connection. And that's how I like to get people involved in my music for that particular song anyway. So you're really going to have to think about what kind of song am I performing? How am I going to get people engaged? How am I going to connect with people while I'm performing that song? Mm-hmm. Yep. So crowd control, key component. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any, I guess you could say, lessons that you learned when you first started performing in terms of dealing with, uh, let's say, security, uh, backstage, Maybe some people in the crowd that may not have necessarily had the most etiquette. Is there anything, you have anything like that? Uh, luckily, I haven't had any like particularly bad experiences with people. I will say that it's been like super embarrassing when you shout out to the crowd. How's everybody doing tonight? And literally nobody says anything back. Like, I've if you're there. not careful, I've been I've been that'll break you and there. shake your whole performance. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you got to kind of think, prepare yourself mentally. All right, I'm at this stage right now. People may not respond back. Keep moving. Keep breezing past it. If people are like, yelling random things, there was this one outfit I wore to the art house tour. Mm-hmm. And it was like a cat suit with the thing coming down the middle and all the way down my thigh. Okay. And I overheard somebody say, oh, girl, you know, she ain't got no panties on. And I was like, yes, girl, I sure don't. And it made the whole crowd laugh. So you kind of have to be making sure you're on your toes about who, if people say something, am I going to respond? If I do respond, how am I going to respond without it getting in the way of wherever you are in the music in your set? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, to piggyback on that, um, there is a little bit of back and forth between you and the audience. Mm -hmm. There will be that naturally. And even if they like you. Like there's gonna, yes. there's gonna be a gonna go message yeah, there's gonna be a little back and forth. But if you are quick witted, like she said, you could actually use that to your advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say another thing is this isn't as I know we talk about detail and all that stuff, but there's a balance between paying attention to detail and over paying attention to detail. Mm-hmm. Now, allow me to explain. Before you step on that stage, pay attention to detail. You have to be as detail oriented as possible. The moment you get on that stage, remember, the crowd doesn't know what's going on. They don't see everything. They don't see everything. So if you stumble on a word, or let's say you might fumble, maybe, miss a step, keep 
ongoing because you'll be surprised at how many people do not notice because a lot at a lot of these performances people don't think it's part of the show part of the show like like someone probably thought that oh that that she the response that she gave to that girl maybe some people thought that was part of the show mm -hmm. that stuff is important so like Prior to, in your preparation for the performance, yes, you most definitely want to be as detail-oriented as possible. But the moment that music start playing, man, or you're the band, or you're, you start your piece, whatever type of performer you're doing, all that go out the window. You got to just, whatever it is you need to handle, you can handle it later. And when you one day get to that point where you're a famous singer and everybody loves you, then maybe you can pull a Beyonce or a Nicki and be like, can you turn the beat up? Can you do the da da Because it's... Somebody's getting fired fire. today. <laughs> yeah, you can do all of that because it's your show. She is a pro at the show must go on. Right. I've seen her fall down like, what, 15 steps? Mm -hmm. Get back up and keep performing. Yep. It's Eat. okay to know the details, but when you're on stage, some Lights things are, are truly out of your control. Out of your control. Do not let it be so in your head that you forget where you are in your song and now... Where you're like Mariah Carey at New Year's Eve, something happened where it skipped and she was like lip syncing, <laughs> but it, it, she was yeah. so pissed and she like didn't even try to stick with the music. She was walking around with an attitude and everyone could just tell. And me and my friends still talk about it two years later. And that's 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 a thing, you know. Like the only reason why you should stop performing once the music goes on is if your life is in mortal danger. Like, mm. for real. To be per to be perfectly honest with you. If, you. if you're truly, 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 truly passionate and you truly want to be the best artist you can be, the only reason why you should stop performing is if your life is threatened or they shut it down. You're literally singing and the lights turn off. You know what I mean? Like, Damn, they shut that down. Yeah, like, like for real. Like, that's the only like reason. Like Beyonce Super Bowl. <laughs> and even at that... She, she was probably was still singing. So, like, you just couldn't hear it. Yeah. So, like, you, 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 the show must go on. That, 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 that saying is a real thing. The show mm -hmm. must go on. So, once you get on that stage and it starts, whatever happens, it happens. And low-key, you may not believe it. It may sound far-fetched. But people will be impressed with how you handle a live performance in yes. adversity. And that it, makes you seem very much more professional. Very much more professional. If so, if the world is burning and you're like, oh, they're like, damn, this place is on fire. She's still singing. <laughs> or he's still singing or he's still rapping. Whatever it is you do. It, it, it shows your level of commitment and your level of focus. And um, performance is it's that is that key component, man. I, I promise you. Um, let's see. What else would you like to see? What else? What do, what do we... What do we what we... Last thing I want to mention, yeah. we got to kind of hurry because it's going to hit 29 soon. It is going to hit 29 soon. memory. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to get a new card, I swear. Um, think about what you're going to wear. That's key. Um, I've been to, I've been a judge on a panel one time, <clears throat> and the dude was kind of like a gangster rapper, but he was dressed it. like a nerd, and I didn't understand his branding. I didn't understand the character mm. Or what he was trying to like show me with his imagery. That's a major so, key. That's a major key. In customer service, people got to like your performance, but people also kind of have to get it as soon as they see you. You don't. Absolutely. And I hate when people say, "Oh, you don't look like an artist," because an artist can look like anything, anything. But you have to look like what you intend for people to think of you as. If you're not presenting yourself in that way, then it's very confusing for people, and it's harder for people co to connect. Because you're trying so, to communicate a message. Yes. So think about what you're going to wear before you're doing Absolutely. performance. Very key. So um, I guess to wrap it all up, because we are nearing our end, right? Yeah. Um, my name is Namdi. You can follow me on Instagram at nam.dee. -E. And uh, this is the wonderful, amazing Lex. This is her channel. She Y'all should follow her, subscribe, hit the notification um, and also comment, like go down in the comments, share your stories, share your advices, share yes. your experiences, you know, like this is where community and Thank as you. a community we should share. Doing my outro so, for me. Yes, as least I can do. She, she made me cookies. Can you, I made me cookies just to come and talk on the camera like that. Like, what are you talking? I'm a cookie monster. Right? I'll, fucking, <laughs> I'll fuck a cookie up. Oh, what? Whoa. Oops. We're going to bleep that out. You nasty. But anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. Thank on you to my Nambi coming and collabing with me on this video. Until yeah. next time, peace. Peace. That's so great. We both girls. I did not even think like that.